and we are back. Double A here again to fill you in on everything BCBS news related. Before we begin, we have some exciting news to share. If you did not know, this year we will have an early spring. Phil, the groundhog, did not see his shadow, and that means snow will be a thing of the past. Well, for now. A little extra sun never hurt anyone. Okay, now we can start the show seeing how we just brightened your day. <laughs> Looking back in history can be engaging and revealing as one juvenile justice class dug deeper into a part of Maryland's untold history. Let's take a look. The history of Maryland lynchings are not known by many. In 1885, a teenager was hung right in front of the old Towson jail after he was accused of assault and rape. Now, historian Jennifer Lyles visited grade 8 students at Lock Raven Technical Academy who are taking a juvenile justice class. Working with the Maryland Lynching Memorial Project, who produced a short film, wanted to share their research of his death. Howard Cooper was lynched at the Towson Jail in 1885 after being accused and uh, committed to the jail for the rape and um, assault of Katie Gray. Um, he and Katie Gray both deny that he, she was raped by him, but that an assault did occur. He was awaiting his appeal um, papers to be filed for a Supreme Court appeal for the violation of his 14th Amendment. Um, a mob showed up that had been following him uh, since the beginning of the crime accusation and pulled him out of jail and lynched him to a nearby tree couldn't imagine how he was feeling at that time, having something around his neck being dragged out of a jail cell, and then to put the cherry on top when she revealed that he was actually 15 years old, I was very, like, I was shocked, and like, I couldn't imagine, and not having a familiar face to look at while he was being hung was just like, like, I couldn't imagine the pain that he was going through. What we are hoping for is not only to bring this to the public attention, but to help people understand how it continues to influence us, why it's important to address. You know, Brian Stephen talks a lot about truth and reconciliation, and he says the truth and reconciliation are sequential. You can't have reconciliation until you know the truth. So we feel it is our job to try and make sure that people know the truth, acknowledge it, even though it's very difficult. When I saw the documentary, I just realized how far our juvenile justice system has come, because now, Juveniles are rewarded with the 14th Amendment. Not really rewarded, but we now are granted the 14th Amendment. And back then, he was not at all. He was 15, and if this happened now, he would have, wouldn't even have been waived to the adult court. And so for him to be sentenced to death alone, like without the lynching part, but for him just to be sentenced to death is very cool and unusual. And then for him to, for justice to be taken into the people's hands, there's a reason that the criminal justice system is in place. And so for them to just take it into their own hands was extremely unfair. Miss St. Pierre's juvenile justice class began a project that explores cases where juveniles were lynched, starting with Howard Cooper. Why is it important that this is not a single story? When I was provided with the connection to Miss Lyles, the public historian, we started going back and forth in an email chain about what had happened to Howard Cooper. And we started talking about, well, why would this be important for kids to know? And then what could kids do as a result of this? And because I believe so much, especially in middle school, sometimes students' voices are overlooked because they can't vote yet. But they have a powerful voice for change. They believe the change is still possible and that's what's powerful. These middle school students are working on a presentation to share with other American history classes. While other students are working on different ideas that will go in the memorial, and they are writing a letter to a legislator to see if they can get his conviction exonerated. I think it's helpful for other people to see how inhumane that our culture has been. And I think it's really important that we dig deeper and that we really see how unjust society was back centuries ago and how like it relates today like back then it was it was lynching now it's police brutality like everything really connects and it's important to learn from the mistakes from 
the past and to connect them to today. Want to make a difference in shaping your world? Then vote. Some students got the opportunity to register during a voter registration drive. We are encouraging anyone 16 years of age to sign up. I need someone to read you the ballot. So today we're with the Social Studies Honor Society here at Pikesville and we're having a voter registration drive. So that includes getting kids 16 and up who want to vote, maybe not in this election, but the next one, and just getting that through. So what they can do is they take a pass, come down to the library, and register to vote. Basically what we do is we go up to a table and we'll ask, hey, are you guys 16 years old? And they'll be like, yeah, sure. We'll get some nods, you know, maybe they're freshmen. And if they're not, then we'll hand them the flyer, be like, hey, you know, it's not that hard. Take 10 minutes, come down to the library during lunch, you know, maybe finish up eating, register to vote. All right, so if you want to come register to vote, all you got to do is go to the library. We decided to do our voter registration drive as part of our Black History Month celebration, partly because it is the 150th anniversary of the 15th Amendment, where African American men got the right to vote, and it's the 100th anniversary of women getting the right to vote in America. So we felt like making it part of our celebration of these activities and things that we already honor as part of our traditions here at Pikesville would be a perfect way to integrate the voter registration drive. I feel it's important because I feel like even if as individuals we have a voice and I feel like that's important because sometimes not everybody is heard. I'm really excited to be able to promote this event as a way to um, just remind students that the right to vote is a result of major sacrifices of people who came before them, not something to be taken for granted. And I just want students to think about the library as a community hub, a place to come to to not only learn about uh, current events and um, political candidates, but also the major social issues that are happening. I believe that, you know, everybody has a decision to make and, you know, believe that everybody's opinion it matters. You know, I also do believe that we need a strong leader for our country. Voting is really important and it's important for everyone to register early and as soon as possible because the sooner young people register to vote, the sooner they actually exercise their power and their voice. I do think it's important because our generation is going to be the generation that leads our future and it's important for our future to be based on our opinions. To become the best person that you can be requires self-care and commitment to live a healthy life. Well, for students at one middle school, starting with your heart has them seeing red. Students at Pikesville Middle School were seeing red, but for a good reason. What's happened at Pikesville Middle School today is we are bringing awareness to National Red Heart Day. As part of the Mind Over Matters year-long campaign in BCPS, spreading the word about a healthy heart is just one way for students to be mindful of their own self-needs. It's important to get the message out because we want to make sure that they can go to someone that they trust to help them be better human beings and to be healthy mentally, physically, and emotionally. At Pikesville, we almost have a, a thousand students here. Our subcommittee for Mind Over Matters went on the morning show, they wore their red, and we really pumped up today. And we were so excited, students were coming up to us saying, hey, I want to make sure that, hey, I'm going to be asked questions and I will want to participate. So they wore red, they came in the door, hey, Miss Banks, I got red on today. So the message did come out loud and clear. And that message resonated personally for one student as she brought awareness to her peers when it comes to matters of the heart. The Heart Healthy Mind Over Matters is important to me personally because my father had heart problems, very bad heart problems, and he was in and out of the hospital a lot. And I recently just lost him to it, unfortunately. But I want to get the word out to other people that to stop that and you can exercise daily. You can eat healthy foods, fruits, vegetables, um, go to see your doctor yearly, just things like that. So at a young age, you can prevent from getting it at an older age. And so every lunch, uh, me and a few of my peers are going around to tables, asking questions about, you know, how can you prevent heart disease? Today, I want them to be aware that eating healthy is important 
so we can uh, reduce the amount of heart attacks that are around our nation. And that to go home and tell parents that they participated in a wonderful program, they learned about having a healthy heart and what foods to eat and exercising and just being physically fit so they can have a healthy heart. Another way to stay heart healthy is dancing. We got the opportunity to highlight a range of dance styles from ballet to ballroom to contemporary at the recent student choreography showcase. For this event, we're celebrating our student choreographers in Baltimore County Public Schools. The event is called the BCPS Student Choreography Showcase. We have 10 middle and high school dance programs at Patapsco High School and Center for the Arts. They spend the day in master classes with Clancy Works Dance Company where they learn about choreography and improvisation and various styles of dance. And then in the evening, they put on a showcase of student work, student choreography for the public. The name of the dance I did today is called Ready for War and what inspired me is I always have problems of choosing life's choices and how the song is calling us to go to the tree and if we go to the tree that's a bad life choice and if we walk away that's a good life choice so it's about struggling. Dance has helped me do middle school by being helpful with things and making people want to look up to me and letting them know they can do whatever they want if they just put their mind into it. My choreographed dance was Laces. Um, it inspired me the relationships that many teenagers have in high school, along with having fun and doing something different. It's a hip hop piece, and we have when you many people when they do hip hop dances, they have shoelaces and they also have fun. So the love laces that we have with one another and the laces in your shoes kind of connected. It was an idea that I came up with to do something fun. One thing that's great about this um, event is that the students are able to be expressive, to have a voice, and they do that um, through movement. So they take emotion and story and narrative and things going on in their life and they bring that to life through their dancing and through um, the movement that you see on stage. It connects heavily with the music and makes a powerful experience for the audience. We feel like we understand what's going on with the students. We get a little more of their expression and their, um, their performance when they are using their own voices on stage. Dance has been something that has motivated me to wake up the next day and it's a relief. It's a space that I can go into and I can let all my stress out, all my schoolwork, all my college work. It's just I can be myself and all worries go away. I can just release my energy in it. It has helped me that way. I hope the students learn more about themselves as a creator, as a creative mover and choreographer, and that they see each other's creativity on the stage. Uh, at the end of the performance, I love the energy when the students are excited by each other and what they have done um, in preparing for this performance. There's a lot of great inspiration and creativity in our students that we see on stage. Well, that does it for this edition of At BCPS In Depth. We sure did have some neat stories to share. If you have any story ideas, comments, or suggestions, contact us at bcps-tv at bcps.org. And follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and with the BCPS Now mobile app. Until, Until next time, time, I'm Imani. And I'm Iyana. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.